What's going on today, Genesis family? Today, we're going to actually uh, spend some time today with the boys, get them acclimated to their new area. Uh, we already, as you can see, already are in the animal area where we want them, but they're not exactly where we want them to be. A couple weeks ago, I went on ahead and moved them in here and got them up out the kennel, you know, which I'm pretty sure they're happy about that. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know um we after doing some tinkering and thinking um uh, what would be best for them we decided that it's best to move them closer to the coop so that way they can uh guard the chickens a little better because right now with them being on chains which i explain later on why that is um it'll be best that we have them closer to the coop so that way if anything does get in they can you know defend the area a lot more effective and be able to protect the chickens a lot more better than further down and you know away from the chickens so today we're gonna have some fun and at the end of the video i got a little surprise for them hopefully they like it we'll see 50 pounds of you know cheap i only spent about maybe 15 16 dollars for this thing and the chain here, my wife got this chain, Mrs. Genesis. And looking at it, I thought it wouldn't be able to do no justice. I, you know, I thought it was too weak of a chain. You see that? It's kind of small, right? But it actually flipped them when they tried to get off of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it works. It works really well for this size dog, if not even a little bigger. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get get them moved up a little further, a little closer to the coop so they can do their job a little better. Hey, get out of there. Get out of there, Speckle. Let me know if we good, El. Pivot, Sam. All right. Come here real quick. Let me let me show y'all something real quick. Let me show you something. Kazi is more clean, you know, your typical dog. Not too much. Not, you know, he ain't gonna do too much. Still got all four walls. And uh you know keep himself together he even likes to eat in his house he he's one of them kind of dogs like you know when we first got him we used to make his bowl and put it right outside his house and he would pick his bowl up spilling all his food just to take it in the house and eat so it just got to the point where we was like all right you know what make his food and put it in his house because that's what he that's where he like to eat as you see kazi <laughs> likes eating and drinking in his house just like a normal person would, I guess. Then you got Bear. Oh. 
on, Bear. Come on, Bear. Okay, same thing with Bear. Same thing with Bear. Let's measure him. Sammy. See how far you go with The house. You want to carry it? Yes. All right. Go ahead. You, know, you want to say something about this house? <laughs> okay, first of all, it's atrocious. <laughs> I don't know how. What's he doing? The bigger he got, the more destructive he got. So he started tearing out the, out the top of the roof, biting this, biting this off. But that is after he decided that he wanted an open concept house. <laughs> and he chewed all of this out. Look at the walls. He chewed the walls out. It's just ridiculous. And he even started biting on the wood. You know, I think he wants this off. He, I think we're going to take this off for him. I kind of got an idea of what he wants. Yeah, we, we kind of got that idea. That if you could remember, Kazi's was pretty clean on the inside. If you look on the inside, there's so much dirt in here. What? What's that about? Four inches off of the floor. <laughs> and he dug holes and dug and uh, kicked the dirt inside the house. So we have to scrape all of this out. No, yeah. not we, you, the boys. <laughs> the kids have to scrape all this dirt out because it's just a mess. Don't they look excited to do it? <laughs> I'm not getting in there. No, you ain't y'all excited to, to, to help Bear in his open concept burn dominium? <laughs> That's his problem. <laughs> That's his what problem. you say, Mia? That's his problem. He made his mess. <laughs> you think he should just live in it? I mean, he's been living in it, but, you know, I think we're going to help him out a little bit and kind of clean this out. We, All we need is a shovel and some muscle. I got it. You got, you got the muscle, huh, Sammy? I got the muscle. You got the muscle? <laughs> I help him out. You help him out. I'm glad to move these barrels. Yep, because he's going to be very interested in the barrels. All right. They're heavy. They're full of feed. So. See, just to practice up. So we am gonna throw this in the garbage now. Um, we'll move the barrels. I say we put them in the middle of the coop. In between the two coops. In between the two coops? Yep. Ha, get up out of there. Um, get out. Okay. That's pretty far. In between the two coops? They're heavy. They're completely full. Nah. Well, this one is just coming out. It's movable.
I told y'all early in the video that what we was gonna do, I was gonna explain to you guys on why they're on chains. They're on good chains, that is, you know, they're lengthy so they still can move around and move about or whatnot and still protect the area. There. You know what? Come. Yeah. 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 Get them, Mia. Get them. This is exactly why he's called Bear. <laughs> um, but back to what I was saying that they're on a nice length of a chain to so where they're not too, you know, stuck. Just, you know, um, they're not just confined to their dog house itself. But they are able to still protect the chickens and still move about. But we can still feel secure about them being in the area. Prior to this, this wasn't the plan. The plan was to actually have them roam the entire area free with no chain, just our electric fence. But the electric fence could never get hot. I done tried, I done tried two different kind of rods. I done tried two different kind of electric uh, currents or whatnot. I tried solar and I tried regular, like uh, just a regular hot wire to it. But for some reason, I cannot get it hot for nothing, like for anything. It just won't get hot. So we just decided for the time being, because, you know, time is not on our side. The dogs are getting older. The chickens are getting older. And there's the aroma of a chicken scent is getting stronger in the air, which therefore means we're now attracting predators. And if the dogs are in their kennels, like how we had them in, they won't be able to do their job. We thought short term until we're able to come to a permanent solution on how we can, you know, allow the dogs to be what we want them to be and roam the area free and still not worry about them getting out. We decided that we would just, you know, keep them on a lengthy chain to where they can still move about, still get to their house, still protect the chickens, and we can sleep good at night knowing that our dog ain't jumped the fence or left, and now we, you know, hope he could come back or will come back. So if you guys have any idea on how to electrify the fence, if you have any, um, what you know, if you can help us in regards to troubleshooting or come up out in any tr troubleshooting um steps we can use please leave it in the comment section let us know your thoughts on it um if you even have great pyrenees what do you do and the last thing we again the last thing we want them to do is to leave the area and a predator comes in and they're nowhere near to be able to protect you know the chickens so that's what we have now we're gonna get into the hard part of the video you know hopefully everything goes good and that is clipping their nails it's about that time for us to go ahead and get them trimmed up, you know, so that way they're not in the dog's way. So let's get to it. See? Good boy. Yeah, good boy. That's good boy. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to warm them up to the sound of the clipper before I just get right into it. But I honestly don't think there will be any easy way of doing this at all. It just don't matter. So I might as well just, <laughs> as you see, he's staring at it. <laughs> There's really no better way of doing this. There's no easier way of doing this. So I'm just going to try to get this done. Good boy.
Good boy. Good job. Pretty much a do it for the day. We was able to get the chickens taken care of, got the dogs taken care of, and um, relocated, took care of their nails, and even reward them with a nice little steak. So I'm pretty sure they enjoyed that. But I really couldn't help but think about a passage. Today reminded me of a passage out of the book of Genesis where the Most High went to Abraham because he was an upright man. And what it means to be upright is that he walked in his ways. He followed his laws, his statutes, his commandments. And he separated himself from the world spiritually first. Abraham walked by faith, not by sight. He allowed the Most High to lead him in a direction and he just trusted him without having any actual plan. He just walked with Abraham. I mean, he walked with the Most High and the Most High led him and he led him to safety. So when I think about our situation, I also think about the same thing on how we just uprooted our, you know, the city, the comfortness of being in the city, you know, our jobs and decided to do something more self-sufficient, becoming more self-sufficient, more self-reliant on ourselves and most importantly on Yah. And that's what we did. And we're gonna be able to, we're gonna break more of our story, our situation, our background uh, in another video to give you guys a better understanding of where we come from and how we got here. But I just couldn't help but think about that passage today. You know, just trusting in the Most High, believing in his word um, and allowing ourselves to be led by faith mm -hmm. and not by sight. So we love you guys. I want to thank you for being, for tuning in. All praises to the Most High. Genesis out.